Texas A&M's Greg Hill gained more yards rushing in his first two seasons than any player in Southwest Conference history. But his junior year has been delayed until now by an NCAA suspension. That's allowed Rodney Thomas to rise near the top of the nation's rushing leaders. While redshirt freshman Leland McElroy is also running to recognition out of the Aggie backfield. But the best unknown back in the country may be Houston's Lamar Smith. And these four breakaway backs take the field today on Raycom. on Southwest Conference Game of the Week. Brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. And brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By La Quinta Inns. By Ford. By Win Dixie. And by Dr. Pepper. afternoon at Kyle Field today on the campus of Texas A&M University in College Station where the number 14 Aggies play host to the Houston Cougars. And welcome to Aggie Land. Dave Barnett along with Grant Taft. We expect this to be a real showcase game for the running backs for both school and coach what may be already the deepest stable of running backs in the country gets even deeper for Texas A&M with the uh, return of Greg Hill this week. If you could put an anticipation meter on Greg Hill right now, it would be peaking at the very crest. Greg Hill is ready to play after a five-game hiatus. He's ready to go. And uh, for the Cougars, they have to deal with not only Hill, but Thomas and Hill together. That's their lion backfield. And they add the Cub this year. That's redshirt freshman Leland McElroy, who's averaging better than six yards per carry. When Houston has it, though, they go with Lamar Smith, who's worth uh, better than 40% of their total yards this year. He may be doing more for his team than any back in the country. About 41% of the offense last week, I was tremendously impressed with him. He has great hands for receiving the football, but when he gets in the secondary, he has great acceleration. When he gets close to the goal line, he's very tough. Aggies are big favorites today, but these two have a history of playing closer than expected games. Back in Aggie land in a moment. 45-year-old Kim Helton, who is celebrating the first win of his... Houston Cougar coaching career and the Southwest Airlines game plan for the Cougars. The Cougars have to build on their victory last week over uh, the Baylor Bears down in the uh, Astrodome. Lamar's got to carry a big load again this week and of course if they're going to win they've got to find a way to cage the Lion and the Cub. And R.C. Slocum in his fifth year at A&M with the fourth best winning percentage in college football, their game plan. The Aggies have to do something that they were unable to do last week, uh, last year against Jimmy Klinger, and that was to uh, pressure him. No sacks last year, but I anticipate that there will be some this year, and that should push them in the area to win. They got to utilize this uh, three-man backfield or the potential for a three-man backfield effectively, and then carry on the tradition of winning here in Kyle Field. That's today, Southwest Airlines game plan. We return to College Station with the opening kickoff after these messages. Really, for the first time all year, we have football weather today. 69 degrees, but it feels quite a bit cooler because of that wind, which is gusting at 15 all the way up to 25 miles per hour out of the north. It may rain. If it does, it'll be later on in the afternoon. Houston wins the toss, defers their decision, and they will kick to the Aggies. Billy Mitchell, number 22, on the left of your screen at 34, Leland McElroy is on the right, anticipating the kick from Jason Stoff of the Cougars, and already the win becomes a factor. The win will be a factor this afternoon, and the decision 
whether to take the ball or to uh, kick the ball uh, is a decision made by coaches prior to coming out uh, before the game. Uh, evidently, uh, Houston elected to defer. That gave the Aggies a chance to get the football on the opening kickoff, but the Cougars get the wind out of the deal. Stop for McElroy at the seven. And as he turns left, dragged down, and a piling on penalty will be added against the Cougars. His return was out to about the 21-yard line, and then the late hit came from Charles Spencer and Corey Pulling and the Aggies will have better than expected field position because of the late hit. Two no-nos on that. Uh, number one is you do not hit late. Number two is you do not hit with the crown of the helmet and that is an automatic. Sophomore quarterback. Dead ball. From Deer Park. Personal foul against the kicking team. Sparing. Corey Pulling. At 6'3", 199, 56% through the air this year. Six touchdowns and six interceptions. And the rest of the nation's bank Aggie offensive unit, Rodney Thomas, the number six rusher in the country, had better than 130 yards per game this year. And the guy who has emerged as their best blocker up front has played a number of positions today. And now the transfer from Brigham Young, and that's Jason Matthews. So they go from their 36-yard line to the air on first down. And uh, that may have been a tremendous catch by Greg Short, the tight end. They will now rule it incomplete. Short covered up by Ryan McCoy for the Cougar defense. And they look this way, led by Stephen Dixon, the little 5'9", defensive tackle up front, one of their top tacklers. The leading tackler is the middle linebacker, Ryan McCoy. He leads the entire league, in fact, with 61 stops on the year. And emerging after moving from quarterback to free safety is Donald Douglas. He says he still doesn't have all the nuances down of the position, but it is coming to him. On second down, the give for about three, perhaps four yards, is to Rodney Thomas up the middle. The Cougar defense, again, will have to uh, stop some very good running backs, but they did it last week. Coming into this game, they have to be uh, feeling very good about themselves, and if they can carry that momentum into the uh, Aggie game, uh, it gives them a better chance. Yeah, they went into that one last week uh, really not in their wildest dreams, expecting to hold Baylor to three points. They won 24-3. They had the next-to-last rated defense in the country until the Baylor game. And Delethro Bell was waiting for the swing toss to Leland McElroy, and right off the bat, the Cougar defense looks improved. Uh, Delethro Bell had uh, the running back man-to-man, -man, and all he did was make his read. He didn't get uh, in a big hurry to get out of there. Uh, stayed on his man and then made a big play. Made everybody look good on the Cougar defense. James Bennett, with an average near 40 yards per kick, will find the going tough into this win today. Lawrence McPherson... He is standing at his 26. And Coach, you were saying earlier today, this wind is about a 20-yard win. The flag is down on the very low short kick, which is down by James McKeon at the 47. I think the wind is strong enough that you have to kick it low into the wind. Uh, he didn't get a good spiral on it. The wind caught it and dropped it almost straight down close to the 50-yard line. But Alexander, the referee, with the indication against Houston, that punt travel just 22. They have it marked at the 47 for Jimmy Klingler, but the officials conferring with the Aggies as uh, you look at the viral stats for Klingler, junior from Stratford High School in Houston, nation's total offense leader last year. The numbers are down this year, but it's because the scheme is so different. They're not running the pure run and shoot from past years. Nation's bank starters for the Cougars. They returned to the starting lineup, the nation's leading receiver last year, Sherman Smith. Ten catches on the year, only one touchdown. Up front, Daryl Clapp, who had been injured most of the year returned to the lineup last week and he gets the start at right guard this week. 300 pounder, a senior from Corpus Christi. There were 12 men participating on the receiving team. It'll be a 15 yard penalty, replay fourth down. 
the Aggies punted on what was fourth and 15. Where they've marked the ball, it's still inches shy of the first down, but uh, Bennett will get a chance to get off a better punt than that. Dr. Pepper roundup, we go right to the matchup of the year, maybe the century in Florida State with the early advantage on Miami. Number 15, North Carolina likewise, and number six, Ohio State with early leads. Hey, that was a very costly penalty for the University of Houston. They had the ball almost at midfield, and now, no matter what happens, uh, they're going to be backed up in their own territory. And flags again. And the Cougars are celebrating. Yeah, Houston uh, is celebrating because Texas A&M's right side moved uh, prematurely. Good ball. Both start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Never seen this many flags for a punt, have you? Well, well, Alexander's crew. It's the first of the game. Uh, seems to be a lot of anticipation on both teams' part, and they're making some mistakes. Bennett will again attempt to deal with this wind, and it's again low, but much longer, and McPherson lets it hop. And the Aggies get a big break out of the exchange of flags down at the 16, a 43-yard kick by James Bennett. The Aggie defense rated sixth in the country. Sam Adams is their leading tackler with 37 for a loss and six quarterback pressures this year. He is playing like the All-American they think he is. Jason Atkinson leads the linebackers, a Butkus Award candidate. Third generation Aggie Aaron Glenn played the game of his life a week ago, shutting down Lloyd Hill, the Texas Tech All-American. Cougars from the 17. Lamar Smith went out of the backfield, and Ron Peters takes the little hitch pass up near the 20 before he's hit by the right corner for AM Ray Mickens. Sent uh, Smith uh, in motion out of the backfield, uh, moving uh, a high percentage of uh, Houston's offense out of the way, so to speak, uh, using him as a decoy, in fact, and also as a blocker. One of Peters' favorite plays from last year. He can turn it into 80 quickly on you. This one for just three, and it's second and seven. Keith Jack is the motion man. Cougars out of the eye to the tailback. Smith bounces outside and has the first first down of the game. Hit by Ray Mickens after a pickup of eight yards. Play was designed to go inside. Uh, it was clogged up inside with the uh, Aggie linebackers. And Smith takes it outside and picks up the first down. He was fairly busy in this game a year ago. He'll be quite a bit busier if the Cougars have their way today. Last week... Caught eight balls against Baylor. Rushed for 118. Two weeks ago, rushed for 119 at Michigan. Movement again. Sam Adams bursting into the backfield. He might have been drawn off by Clapp at right guard. Offensive lineman uh, may have lifted his hand, and if that uh, is ball. the case. False start. Offense. The defense can move, and uh, Sam is very quick, and uh, when he saw that movement, he took off and got a big five-yard penalty against the Cougars. Tim Helton, who uh, sent some shockwaves around this league with the upset last week. Hoping for a repeat performance today. Lingler has it batted down by Adams, who again had the early penetration. Good 6'4", 270-pounder out of Cypress Creek. Sam Adams uh, has uh, great mobility. He's a strong, strong player as well. And you see the he's actually reaching outside in to knock that ball down. Nine tackles at Lubbock, a sack and a tackle for a loss. Lamar Smith tripped up at the line and then continues forward to about the 27, where he's hit by Reggie Graham, the junior inside backer from League City. Bring up third, and still around 10 or 11 needed. Big play for the defense. Uh, important at this point to force Houston out of the long drives that they had last week against Baylor. This third down is critical. 
And you can see their trouble in converting third downs this year, although they were much improved a week ago. Flags again down on movement in the line as it is incomplete intended for Lamar Smith with coverage by the free safety junior White. Hey, let me point out something. Uh, offensive teams have a very, very tough time uh, in this stadium. It's very noisy. Uh, the crowd uh, noise level is extremely high, and uh, it's very difficult to call audibles at the line of scrimmage. So you'll get a lot of uh, pre-movement by offensive linemen. Offside, defense. A lot of times. Penalty, replay third down. A lot of times uh, the offense will use hand signals. I've not detected that today with uh, Klingler on his outside people, but you have to come in with a way to communicate to your wide people. That time it was the Aggies who jumped. And a bunch of flags already. Third and six. Klingler with the short toss has Smith, who is tripped up by Mickens. Smith with the dive forward is very close to the marker for the first down. If he got it, it was on the second effort. I believe it is the first down, and it was very good second effort. And he got it by about a foot. They wore him out last week, and he, he continued as the game went on to get stronger. He had his best uh, series in the fourth quarter against Big. Bobbles the ball a little bit, gets it strong in his outside arm to protect it, and then at the last moment lunges forward. He sees the marker on the sideline and extends his arms to put the ball past the marker. That's not always an accurate mark because it's away from the uh, markers on the other side, but it's pretty close usually. Cougars despite the flags, first and ten. This is Keandre Sanders, who lines up at a number of positions in the Cougars scheme, sometimes tailback, and they'll move him around as a slot back. Tackle is made by Eric England, the right defensive end from Sugar Land, Texas. There's not a lot of place to run inside on the Aggies. Their inside linebackers step up and meet blocks very well. Uh, they've got uh, excellent speed on their defensive front, so they recovered, use their hands very well on the offensive player, then recover and pursue the football. Give you an idea of how little Sanders carries it. Eighth attempt of the year. Smith had 81 carries for the year coming in. And again, there is early movement. This time it looks like the left guard, Kenny Robbins, for Houston. That's that crowd ball. Both start. Offense. Obviously tough for the Houston line to deal with. Although Kim Helton disagrees, so they'll move it back to the 35. One of the tough things is to stand on that sideline and watch someone make a mistake in movement. You've practiced all week with the count, now don't make a mistake. Atkinson came on the quick blitz. Klingler did a nice job just getting it off. In the general direction of Donald Moffitt. Atkinson timing that blitz perfectly was almost off sides, but he was able to burst in and make Klingler hurry the throw. That's the first blitz of the afternoon. Uh, that was a linebacker blitz. They can bring all sorts. They can bring an outside corner blitz. But uh, they prefer to bring their inside linebackers, and uh, they've had good success, but not against Jimmy Klingler last year. Last year in this game, 488 yards against the Aggies and three touchdowns. That was, of course, in the running shoot. Smith breaks one tackle, but not the hit by Graham. Reggie Graham, junior linebacker, sack leader for the Aggies, stops Lamar Smith, and the Cougars will have to punt. Reggie made an excellent play on the outside, but it was the play of the defensive lineman inside that forced Smith outside. Then the pursuit can get there. Fourth and 16, the punt with the win by Terry George. Aaron Glenn runs away from it, and it takes a big Houston bounce all the way inside the five-yard line. And they'll let that thing get nose up to the goal line. Mercy, what a punt and roll. It goes 67 yards. And the Aggies could not be backed up deeper. Terry George's longest punt before this 67-yarder was 48. He has the Aggies backed up inside their own one-yard line. Nothing-nothing game, 8.54 to play in the first quarter. 
Bullock to the line with a backfield of Thomas and Gross on first and ten. And the give to the fullback Gross who gets him out of the shadow of that goal post and gouges out about seven yards. Gross, who is a junior from A&M Consolidated High School here in College Station, and also Detron Smith, his backup, we expect to see together in what they call their hammer backfield quite a bit today. They're going to use that for power, and in such instances here, they might uh, try to use it. Uh, Rodney Thomas is in the ball game right now. Still waiting on the first appearance by Greg Hill. Aggies coaches said they'd play that by ear. As to how much he'd see action. A loss on the give to Thomas. Back to the two. Tackle by Eric Harrison, the left defensive tackle from Fort Worth. Eric Harrison uh, played the uh, offensive lineman very well that time. Uh, kept his feet underneath him and was able to come off the block and make the tackle for a loss. Offensive coordinator Bob Toledo. Trying to add some extra wrinkles to his offense because he's got more weapons than he's ever had this year. Although we still haven't seen one of them yet, and that's Hill. Out of his own end zone, Pulling is low, intended for Tony Harrison, but they will give him the catch, and an Aggie first down to the 13. Well, that was big. Going into the wind, coming off the one-foot line, Getting the first down on the 15 uh, is very big for your offense. Pulley comes out uh, on just a little uh, rollout action. Throws it. Uh, he throws off balance, and it's low. But uh, down underneath uh, for the catch. Outstanding job. Flags are down on the first down pass. And Ryan Matthews wrestled down at the 20. Flags were thrown on the snap. If it stands, it's the seventh catch of the year for Matthews. Red ball, both start, offense. Boy, right where they really can't afford any miscue. Uh, that's very unusual. Uh, Bob Toledo's offense, uh, usually extremely polished. Uh, they're playing at home. The crowd noise shouldn't be bothering them. Uh, they are just anticipating some snaps and uh, moving too quickly. We were here three weeks ago when a &M played Missouri, and a lot of people were worried about Corey Pollock because he had not had a good day at Oklahoma in the Sooners' 44-14 win. But they've simplified their scheme somewhat. They've told him he doesn't have to win every game by himself. He has calmed down, stayed within himself, and now, uh, to a man, his coaches say he's playing about the way they had anticipated he would play, which is at a very high level. First and 15 from their own eight. Out of the eye, the give is to Thomas, who bounces outside and has some room. Donald Douglas came up and hit him at the 15. But Thomas gets him again out of uh, a bit of a hole with a key block by the right tackle, Matthews. That's a very uh, strong indication of why it is so critical not to make mistakes, particularly inside your own 20-yard line. Had they not had the five-yard penalty, they're looking at a first down right now with that good run from Rodney Thomas. He's had at least 100 yards in every game this year. Second and seven. Bullock throwing complete to Matthews, who drags a tackler up across the 30 for 15 yards, another Aggie first down. Man-to-man -man coverage, simple out route, uh, very good throw by Corey Pulley. You also have fine protection from the offensive line. There was absolutely no pressure. Pulley has not had a whole lot of success throwing to his wideouts this year. A lot of the completions have been to tight ends and running backs, and they welcome the return from his five-game suspension of Brian Mitchell. His return has been less held than that of Hill, but they think he may be the best wideout. Hit and swarm and drops it. It might be a Cougar recovery at the 27-yard line. Houston ball on the first break of the day. It's Ryan McCoy at the bottom of the pile. Ryan McCoy, the leader on the defense for the Cougars. Watch him as he plays off the block, runs to the football. 
gets in perfect position, runs past the uh, ball carrier, but that's the pursuit angle, and then is in a place to cover that football. This is something that the Aggies could not afford to do inside their own territory with the wind in their face is to turn that football over. Causing the fumble was Stephen Dixon. As the Cougars break even on the takeaway giveaway for the first and 10 at the a and 27. Short toss is perhaps a lateral that might have been thrown behind him and it's recovered by the Aggies. Michael Hendricks, the strong safety from Converse Judson comes up with it. Ball was thrown low, then mishandled. Receiver took his eye off the ball. Big play for the uh, Aggie defense to turn back around, get the ball back for the Aggie offense. That was Sherman Smith who couldn't find the handle. Hendricks did, and AM breathes a big sigh of relief. The Aggies giveth, and then they taketh, and they take it over at their own 38 yard line after the attempted screen to Sherman Smith. The Cougars have had success through the years with that play, and they've been able to bust a lot of long ones, but they have not been able to do much with it today. And that one turned into disaster. Out of the eye on first down, Rodney Thomas gets a block from Gross, and is sprung for maybe 10. It'll be close for the first at the 47. Rodney described himself as a collision runner. And uh, he just uh, proved it on that run. Uh, two or three people taking a hit. He's twisting, turning, picking up extra yardage. He says he's, in his own words, more violent in his style than Greg Hill, who tends to be more polished in uh, staying behind his blockers and then picking his spot to burst forward. And then kind of a hybrid of the two would be McElroy. Thomas says he's got uh, some characteristics of both Thomas and Hill. Marker is stretched and they're about a yard shy still. So it'll be second and short. A quick stick marker again uh, for those uh, that are not familiar with that. It's a new apparatus designed to give a more accurate marking of the football, which is very important when you have 10 yards. But up front by Houston and flags are down as Gross would appear to have the first down. But Alexander has been the busiest man on the field so far. Cougars think sits against the Aggies. This has got to be the last thing he wanted because... There is uh, no foul on the play. The offensive movement was caused by the defense in the neutral zone. There was no contact, therefore no foul. Second down. You, you're looking at me with a puzzled look like I'm supposed to figure that out. Did that make sense to you? Absolutely zero. <laughs> if you're in the neutral zone when the ball snapped, you're off sides. That is how uh, I understood the rule. They wave it off. We play it second and a couple of feet. McKeon in motion. Thomas takes the pitch and is dropped for a loss. Back at the 45. Nice penetration from his safety spot by Douglas and also Nahala Johnson, the right end. You know, come back in with that same uh, intense level that they had uh, last week against Baylor and they exhibited it there. Uh, getting off the blocks, pursuing the football. Uh, not getting up the field too far into the AM backfield. Uh, this defense looks good again this week. We talked about how the Aggies have simplified things for Pullock. The Cougars, when they changed defensive coordinators in the middle of last week, Gene Smith taking over for Melvin Robertson did the same thing. With great success. This toss to Harrison, and he coughs it up. At midfield, the Aggies think they have made the recovery. It looked at first as if Harrison might have lost that ball after he had hit the turf, but they rule it a fumble, and it is an A&M recovery for the first down. 
Good heads up uh, play by the Aggies after the fumble. Well conceived play, a little inside screen coming back against the grain, blocking downfield, balls knocked loose. Good call, definitely a fumble. And for the first time in 1993, Greg Hill, who says when you make a mistake, it makes you a better man when you come back and correct it, checks in and carries to the Cougar 43-yard line. Two years ago, his freshman year, they called it GHT, Greg Hill time. He had watched uh, Darren Lewis become the Southwest Conference's all-time leading rusher his freshman redshirt year he came in and looked every bit the equal of Darren Lewis seven yards is a good start for the day not bad 1216 yards as a freshman 1339 yards as a sophomore and he again takes it left side to the Cougar 35 where he's hit by McCoy Matthews up front with another key block and another A&M first down. Greg Hill has uh, excellent balance, but I think one of the things that makes him an outstanding player, he has what is referred to as eyes. He can see peripherally, and uh, he uh, is able to make cuts that a lot of backs cannot make. One thing he's done during his uh, suspension is build his... Muscle. He is uh, one of the stoutest looking 205 pound running backs you'll ever see. A lot of time in the weight room. Pullard complete to the tight end and short rambles near the 20 for another first down. 14 yards. Came in with a two tight end offensive formation. Uh, slipped uh, the uh, tight end out into the uh, flat. Read the linebacker. We'll watch uh, Corey Pullig uh, reading that linebacker and throws off of him. Pretty good run by a big tight end. Short, senior from San Antonio. Carries to the Houston 21-yard line and a timeout with 2.46 to go in a scoreless first quarter. All right, telecast today, a copyrighted presentation of the University of Houston, Texas A&M University, the Southwest Conference, and Raycom Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without prior written consent is forbidden. Brian Mitchell's in the game for the first time, Dave, and uh, if he does as well as Greg Hill did on his first two plays, they may be in the end zone. That'd be quite a debut. He's wide right, top of your screen. First and 10 and in to give once again to the tailback Hill, and he's near another first down showing no ill effects whatsoever from his layoff to tackle by John W. Brown. Collins is an outstanding offensive lineman and if you'll watch him take his man and uh, perform what is referred to as a pancake. That opens up a running lane for Greg Hill and he takes advantage of it. The guy's averaging about seven yards a pop. Calvin Collins will be here a long time. This is the redshirt freshman from Beaumont. He'll carry for nine, second and one. And uh, don't think enough for the first down this time. Hit at the 12 by Bell, the weak side backer. The Aggies have shown a, a lot of uh, the ability to mix it up on this drive, and Houston called that timeout maybe to spoil their rhythm just a bit. He does not have the first, and it'll be third and one. One of the things that you notice, uh, when Greg Hill came into the game, it seemed that everyone picked it up another notch on the field. I think that's because of the respect that the team has for Greg. I've been impressed with the way he's handled the suspension. He's been uh, very upright about it, and I think the players have looked forward to his coming back. Motion man McKee in the second tight end. Hill, right side, big roof, first and goal, Aggie. Vintage uh, offense from uh, the Texas Aggies. Just turn and pitch it to the tailback. Get blocking up front, let him do his thing. And again, he picked up another seven or eight yards, and they're on the 
lip down there, five yards from the goal line. Their entire stable averaging about six per carry, and Greg Hill right at that number himself. First and goal, A&M. From the five, the draw play to Hill, who carries to the two. You mentioned a moment ago about uh, Greg's strength. He just exhibited some on that linebacker as he plowed right over the top of him, put him on his back, and uh, moved the ball to the two-yard line. The other thing he did is he gets a nice hand headed toward the sideline. The other thing he did during his layoff was he volunteered for the scout team. He impersonated the tailback for whatever that week's opponent happened to be. Well, he'll get you ready for anybody. Pitch, Rodney Thomas unable to get that corner turn. Donald Douglas comes in and tosses him out of bounds. So the loss back near the six to bring up third and goal. Rodney Thomas uh, is uh, outside on a just a sweep hand and uh, is met by Donald Douglas who read the play very well coming out of the secondary. You could probably anticipate that with his quick movement on the running play, you'll see a fake of that and they'll try to get the ball in the end zone behind his uh, very aggressive movement toward the offensive line of scrimmage. That's the end of the first quarter. No score at Kyle Field and College Station. Good crowd expected to be uh, somewhere over 60,000 at Kyle Field on the A&M campus today. Dave Barnett, Grant Camp on Raycom and Prime Network where we open the second quarter. Third down and goal, A&M from the Houston four-yard line. Corey Pollard on the roll, pressured by McCoy, and it is caught in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Ryan Matthews, first touchdown of his junior year. The coaches in the press box picked up the fast movements of uh, Douglas, the uh, free safety, and uh, selected a play that would put a receiver right in that zone, and uh, it was wide open. Harry Benetulius, perfect on the year, now 20 for 20 on extra points, and it's 7-0 Aggies. See Douglas up uh, toward the line of scrimmage, steps up inside, Pulley uh, rolls out to the outside and uh, throws the ball into the open zone for the touchdown. A nice sliding catch, too, reaching back behind him by Ryan Manson. As the Aggies celebrate after 12 play drive, 62 yards, Matthews finishes it, but uh, that drive notable mainly for the debut of the junior season by Greg Hill. Several nice runs to punctuate the first scoring drive of the afternoon. Look at the first quarter stats. It was scoreless, of course, at the end of the first. Houston with just two first downs. A&M had six. No rushing yards for the Cougars. And only nine passing yards. Corey Pulling five of six for 37. And those numbers, not what you would expect from a Houston offense. But uh, again, they are facing the number six rated defense in the country. And a defense which is uh, rounding into shape since the disappointment at Oklahoma earlier in the year. With the win, Venetulius will send uh, this one through the end zone, and Houston will start from their 20. Texas A&M is a university that's loaded with great tradition. One is the 12th man. The opposite stands from us, the home of the 12th man. They place on each of the uh, kickoff teams a walk-on that comes out to symbolize the 12th man who at one time in the past history came down out of the stands and participated in a game. It's been a great revival of that tradition and given young people that wouldn't have a chance, a chance to play. Houston first and 10. Their own 20 yard line, and there's a nice gap for Teandre Sanders who backs his way near the 40. 
Biggest gain yet for Houston. It goes 20 yards for Sanders. Sam Adams uh, looks like he's going to be in the backfield and be very disruptive. He makes an excellent move, but uh, the running back runs right by him, breaks into the secondary. Linebacker is now stepped to his right. Good run, Keandre. Lamar Smith puts his head down, pushes forward. He'll get about three or four yards. Tackle is made by Graham. Louisville hoping to stay unbeaten. Big test at West Virginia today. Smith will head out on second down and seven. We got the highest of compliments from the Aggie defensive coaches yesterday. They said that from what they've seen on film of Smith, he's at least as good or maybe better than Dan Morris, who ran and shut down at Lubbock last week. Klingler on the run just to make sure no one can catch that one in the general area of Peters. And it'll be third and seven. The Cougar running game last week uh, did something to the Aggie defense that uh, surprised me a little bit. They have not blitzed one time. Uh, they're concerned about the run. They're playing more in a zone, going to contain, and uh, not uh, trying to put any pressure on Klingler at this point. I suppose if he hurts them, then they'll bring with the pressure. Of course, it's a different preparation now that you don't always get the four wideouts. Here you do. This is a more traditional look for the Cougars, but a lot of high formation, a lot of two tight end. Sanders turned away at the 45 by Graham and some buddies. And that's something you wouldn't have seen last year, a conservative call on third and seven. Absolutely not. Uh, I think Coach Helton is uh, trying to bring this football team along. He's adding some offensive plays each week. And uh, he thinks that if they can get better each week offensively, not turn the ball over a lot, and gain confidence by the end of the year, they can be a good football team. George's kick into the wind will bounce and stay away from Aaron Glenn, which is not that bad if you're a Cougar fan. Glenn leads the nation in punt return. Goal goes to the 16. Punt travels 39 yards. 7 nothing. Texas in. Well, there was a late flag on that punt, so they uh, backed him up, and Houston had to kick it again. This one goes 40 yards, and really not a whole lot of difference. a and will start from the 20. First down and 10 from there. The wind has died down a little bit. Uh, he was able to get a better kickoff into the wind than we've seen in the first quarter. We got here about 9.30 this morning, and it was whipping. It was probably at least 25 miles per hour. It, it was hard to imagine any successful kicks into the wind today, but it has calmed quite a bit. Greg Hill stays in at the tailback and strings out the sweep for about three yards, carrying Alfred Young, the right corner, with him, and Jerome Williams, the strong safety. I continue to be uh, impressed with the mobility and the pursuit of this Houston defense. And it's strange that through three ball games, they seemed almost non-existent. They made a lot of mistakes. They tackled poorly. Now in uh, this game and the game last week, they've uh, turned into a good defensive football team. They got eight spots in the national rankings last week. They, they had a ways to travel from number 105. The fullback Smith breaks some tackles and at the 42-yard line has a first and 10, 19 yards before McCoy chases him down. Detron Smith, a uh, very fine athlete, puts the ball on the perimeter, uh, makes a very strong lunge, breaks free, and picks up that uh, very important extra yardage. And also, uh, he, uh, I think, did a little damage to the guy coming in to make the tackle. Yeah, he left Alfred Young in his wake. He was uh, one of the would-be tacklers. Smith, who uh, they compare to Robert Wilson, one of the strongest backs they've ever had here at A&M, Average 10 pancake blocks. You talked about that earlier. Per game as a high school senior at Lake Highlands in Dallas. Second strongest Aggie, Detron Smith, as they check on Alfred Young. Our Southwest Airlines storyline, Houston has been limited to just 34 total yards. 
Matthews has the touchdown catch on third and goal. Hill on that drive, seven carries, 37 yards on the day. Young will make his way to the bench under his own power. Not a real deep defense. He's starting because John H. Brown, JB2, strained a knee two weeks ago at Michigan. He was very limited last week. And so a thin defense just at least temporarily got even thinner. Little delay run, Hill outside. Houston territory, close for another first down, wrapped up by Douglas. Vintage Hill closed inside, take it outside. East and west, then turn it north and south. You would think that the, the, the last thing to come back after a layoff would be timing, but he looks like he's got his usual timing today. I think he was very smart in volunteering for the scout team, rather standing behind the offense, watching them, feeling sorry for himself. He made a contribution to the Aggie team by playing on the scout team, and it helped his timing. First and 10, a &M. up 7 nothing. early second quarter. Hill, off left tackle, and near the 43. Mike Mukes, the backup at end, junior from Fresno, California, 6'1", 271-pounder. Made the ankle tackle on Greg Hill. There's some good movement in the offensive line. Uh, Chris Dawson, uh, Jason Matthews, and Calvin Collins are three of the better offensive linemen in the conference. Uh, they uh, have uh, taken what was sort of a nondescript offensive line and turned them in mid-season to a very solid offensive line. Matthews is the guy that's really come on. He's been a defensive lineman, a tight end, now a tackle. Harrison took a knee as soon as he made that catch and uh, marked himself down at the 38, about a yard shy of the first down. A lot of Thomas, a lot of Hill so far. The guy we haven't seen with the ball yet is McElroy, but we expect to. They're trying to figure out some new ways to utilize Leland McElroy as what they call a nickelback. You, you think of a nickelback as a defensive back, but that's the term they're going to give McElroy when they line him up, sometimes in the backfield, sometimes as a wideout, sometimes in a slot. But it's still Hill at tailback, and Smith breaking out of the eye in motion. Open was short and a bit hot for him as he had to reach for that one, and the Cougars have held. Call that open as a butcher knife. There's not anybody close to you. Uh, perfect uh, position to pick up the first down. What we're seeing now with the Houston uh, defense, the cornerbacks are laying off of the wide receivers, respecting their speed. They're able to throw the quick outside, the stop out for eight or nine yards. And we'll see that the rest of the game. Former walk-on from Austin, James Bennett. With the wind, angling for the corner. And he got it at the two-yard line. Wow, wow, that's, uh, that's a tremendous kick. Uh, and with the wind of your back blowing across uh, the bow of the ball, that's really great trajectory. <laughs> Today's game is brought to you in part by the Texas Lottery. And tonight's Lotto Texas estimated jackpot is $3 million. Well, the Aggies were backed up to their own one foot line, and they survived. And right now, Houston backed up to their two, trailing seven to nothing in the second quarter. I can't think of a place uh, more difficult to be than on the uh, two yard line in Kyle Field uh, with the noise level about to uh, go to the top and going into the wind. Into the wind is probably the toughest factor of all. And just 34 total yards all day by the Cougars. Lamar Smith gets a night near the five-yard line where he's put down by Graham and uh, Antonio Shorter. Reggie Graham is one of those unheralded uh, linebackers from Texas A&M, but watch him play two blocks, come off the block, and make the tackle. That's linebacking. He's their sack leader. There are only four sacks on the year. Sacks are not quite what they used to be here. There are flags all over the place as Lamar Smith 
is into Aggie territory should the play stand. There were a lot of players standing around as if they had heard a whistle or thought they had heard a whistle. And there were two flags at the line of scrimmage. It went 46 yards, but we'll see if it counts. Offside on the defense will be refused. Yep, it counts. Big time it counts. Uh, that was a well-executed play. Again, a way to use Smith, getting him into the uh, secondary clear, and a big, big play. Play action fake to Tiandre. Swift Smith out into the secondary, and uh, boy, is that a big one. Into the win. Smith getting a breather. Houston from the Aggie 49 yard line. 46 yard pass and run play. Donald Moffitt, who got a brief try out at the tailback last week in the win over Baylor. Normally an inside slot receiver, just 5'9, 176. He's tackled by. Steve, Steve Soleri. Steve Soleri uh, is a transfer student that came in and has made a real contribution. Uh, watch him on this play. Play off the block and makes the stop. Senior from Sugarland Willow Ridge High School. Second down at eight, and Klingler, under heavy pressure, dropped at midfield. Adams and England meet at the quarterback. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, coach will say a few choice words to Klingler when he comes to the sideline. Uh, it's fine to scramble, but uh, you eat that football. Watch him get that arm up being pursued. Uh, they're fortunate uh, that he held on to the ball at that time. Could have given the uh, Aggies a uh, great field position. and about ten and a half for Houston. On the slant end, it's incomplete, intended for Joey Mouton. Pass was just slightly overthrown. It looked like Mouton was open. And Houston can go no further after the big play. So Terry George, whose last punt went 67 yards down to the one-foot line, will kick this one in to the win. Aaron Glenn back at his 10. That's sacked by the Aggies. Their first against Houston in two years. They did not sack Jimmy Klingler in the Astrodome. Last year. And you can see the wind just slapped that one down at the 27-yard line. It's touched near the 30. And finally down at the 22 by Jerome Williams. 19 yards into that uh, merciless north wind. Now, maybe some question as to whether they uh, mark it at the first spot of contact or the second. And there's also a flag down. As we wait for the indication, there's some notes from around the league on our Ford Southwest Conference updates. Texas later on at the Cotton Bowl against Oklahoma. And they have won their last four against the Sooners who have had a better record every one of those years coming into the game. SMU's Chad Patton, one more sack, and he ties the all-time Mustang school sack record. And one of the best kick blockers you'll ever see. Baylor's J.J. Joe coming in, needing 147 passing yards. By the kicking team, penalty be refused, first down. 147 yards, and Joe will tie Cody Carlson for the all-time Baylor pass yards record. I want to alert you that uh, because of atmospheric disturbances called sunspots, we may experience some breakup in our transmission today. It's a temporary condition. Please bear with us. Aggies go from just outside their 30, leading 7 to nothing midway second period. Gross back in at fullback. Thomas back in at tailback. And he sends the tackler backwards near a first down. Self-described collision runner. And he did collide. And the guy who gets the worst of it here is Jerome Williams. Jerome's a good defensive player. He was in perfect position to make the hit. But actually the shoulder pads of the running back were under the tackler. And you're going to go back most of the time unless you get your shoulder pads under the offensive ball carrier. 
Aggies go with their hammer formation. Both fullbacks in together, Gross and Smith. And it's Detron Smith for the first down with the extra effort. There are some backs who will do anything possible to avoid contact. And then there's some like Thomas who seem to relish it and seek it out. Uh, he's like a heat-seeking <laughs> missile when he gets in that secondary. Uh, he will run over you, but the thing that makes him so tough is that he can also run around you. Gross, a guy who has uh, been very quietly effective as a junior. Started a couple of times as a freshman two years ago and had Doug Carter the starter last year. Gross, nearly five yards per carry as a junior this year. Rodney Thomas to Houston's 49-yard line. With their depth and with the return of Hill, they should never have a tired back. Whoever they have back there should always have fresh legs. Offensive linemen are coming off the ball well. Watch Matthews on this play. Opens a gaping hole. And, of course, when you let Rodney Thomas have that kind of hole, he's going to bounce around in that secondary. They nicknamed Jason Matthews Torso. You, you, you see him especially out of pads. It's, you see how apt that nickname is. He is all Torso. Short legs. Two, two sixties, six second frame. Thomas again puts that head down and drives forward and has another Aggie first at the 43. It took both safeties to bring him down. R.C. Slocum told me yesterday that he thinks this is the best athlete on the offensive line. And you can see here. Uh, he uh, forced his man outside, kept his feet, and uh, again created some running room for the running backs. First down. Under six minutes in the second quarter. After a scoreless first, short toss, Tony Harrison juggles it but hangs on. And he's inside the 35 yard line where Douglas and Bell combined for the hit. Harrison, probably their most effective receiver so far this year, but he gets some help with the return to the active status of Brian Mitchell, who was a career 25-yard per catch deep threat for AM. And look at the possession time. About a two-to-one edge for AM. Running that ball. Motion man to Keenan. Needing one for the first. Thomas will get a bunch more and knocked out inside the 20 of Houston by Donald Douglas. 15. Rodney Thomas. Texas A&M is able to pick up some very vital yardage because the uh, Houston secondary is deep off the wide receivers. This is a counteraction play that uh, brings the ball back to the short side of the field. Uh, where that hash mark has been widened, uh, two more yards of running room for Rodney Thomas, and he takes advantage of it. Jerome Williams it was, standing between Thomas and six points. First and 10, the 19-yard line. The other side this time, and Douglas gets some help, but you can see the leg strength of Thomas. It took four Cougars to finally drag him out of bounds. Very strong-legged. Uh, in fact, uh, both he and Hill uh, have two great sets of legs. Uh, they use them uh, when the crowd comes in on them, but they also have speed in those legs, speed to burn. The average coming in 240 rushing yards per game. That's good for 12 from the country. The passing yards per game slowly climbing. But in the bottom half of the country, a little over 170 per game. Good start today, though, by Puller. And he'll go to the air on second and seven. Great protection. The ball is incomplete, intended for Ryan Matthews, and the Aggies scream for interference, but there's no flat. Well, that's good defense. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, you can't always see where there's contact of the body or the arm coming across the body. And uh, naturally, a crowd's going to think that that may be interference, but the truth of the matter is it looked like a very solid defensive play breaking on the ball. He has as much right to the football as the offensive player does. So decision time on third down and seven. They come out in a passing look. 
with Harrison and Matthews both wide right. And the toss off balance will have a flag. It was intended for McKeon at the goal line. And it was nowhere near to complete, but the flags were thrown in the Cougar secondary. From where they threw it, it, you might think it was a holding call that they're discussing here. I think it was. I think Ryan McCarr had his uh, hands on the uh, tight end, keeping him from uh, getting loose as he was uh, previously in the first quarter. Boy, when you had a third and seven, how costly that penalty is. Two things about uh, executing a play like that is for the quarterback to get rid of the ball Holding quickly. On the defense against an eligible receiver, half the distance penalty to the goal line, automatic first down. Keeping uh, the uh, ball in the air quickly allows the official to see the hole. See how quickly he gets the ball off? Uh, he knew that he couldn't get the ball to tight end, but he also knew that the tight end was being held up by Ryan McCoy watching grab hold of his shirt. <laughs> that is holding, Ryan. He tried to be or subtle down. about it. <laughs> tried to just get the, the end of the sleeve. But Alexander giving health into his explanation on the sixth penalty of the afternoon against his Cougars. And the Aggies are set up now first down and goal at the Houston 8. On top already, 7 to nothing. The routes for Texas A&M have been extremely simple. A little quick out. Read the back out of the backfield. Read the tight end. Gross and Thomas in the eye. Matthews in motion. Rodney Thomas hit at the line and backs outside the 10-yard line. Driven there by Stephen Dixon. A very good recovery by the uh, defensive folks over there for the Cougs. Uh, stepped up, Rodney hits inside, steps to the outside, and makes uh, something happen, but the defense is in good position. Good tackle, good high tackle on uh, Rodney Thomas. Don't get low on that guy, he'll knee you. Gene Smith, who took over as the coordinator of the Cougar defense last year, with immediate results. Loss of one, second and goal. Thomas, right side, high steps into the end zone. Rodney Thomas leads the Southwest Conference in scoring. That is touchdown number nine for the junior from Groveton. A&M up 13 to number. Well, that's a, a very solid sound play down on the goal line. You turn, make a safe pitch, uh, get people out on the perimeter, and then let a great running back uh, knock it into the end zone. And that's exactly what uh, Rodney Thomas did. And then Atulius with the extra point. Thomas also came in tied for second nationally in scoring, and he won't hurt that at Watch the uh, pull of the offensive lineman. You see the backside guard, the onside guard pulling. Great block on the outside by Collins, and uh, it's an easy walk into the end zone. 4-0-4 in the half. Bayonet, 14, Houston, nothing. Well, Houston had uh, battled hard to a scoreless first quarter, now down 14 to nothing. Coast of eight changed their game plan, now down a couple of touchdowns, and they stick with the mixture running pass that we've seen. I think Coach Helton wants to try to establish his offense. I don't think you get tricky against uh, this uh, very fine AM defense. You better stick with your mitten. Uh, try to do the things you plan to do coming into the game. Now, one thing that he mentioned to us earlier today was that he was going to insert a few trick plays. We really haven't seen that much except just the wide screen uh, out there where he sends the tailback in motion. Well, and the one that really blew up in their faces was uh, the lateral on uh, the attempt to Sherman Smith right after they had made a recovery at the A&M 27-yard line. And that play looms right now is probably the biggest in the game because it was nothing-nothing when Houston turned it right back over. And now they find themselves down by 14. Lamar Smith had a 
making it up as he goes. That play originally designed, it looked like, to go straight through the middle and then bounce right and then cut it back left and turns it into a six-yard pickup. There was no design on that play. That was strictly Lamar Smith uh, making something out of nothing. But that's a, about as well as any defense has held him this year. Six carries for this 22 yards. Boomer has it batted down at the line for the second time today. Antonio Shorter, the outside linebacker who was questionable because of a bruised hand coming in. I hope that was his good hand. I was just going to say, uh, probably, <laughs> probably it was the good hand. Because they were supposed to have a cast on the bad one. That's two knockdowns and uh, one sack of this uh, defense uh, this afternoon. Uh, that's more than they got last year against Klingler. And the Aggies in a situation where they might be off here, third and four. Atkinson comes, they pick him up nicely. Deep ball up the sideline is too deep. It was intended for Ron Peters in single coverage with Aaron Glenn, and not too many people have succeeded when it's been Glenn man on man. Well, he's outstanding. In 1989, Jason Atkinson was on the sideline as a redshirt freshman. He was watching uh, intensely this ball game, and Andre Ware had just moved his team down to the goal line, and uh, old Aaron Wallace came in on a blitz, knocked the ball loose, knocked the helmet off, and uh, of Ware picked it up in a triumphal gesture, and uh, the defense has never been the same since then. They've taken that uh, handle of the wrecking crew and worn it beautifully. That kick goes 38 yards. Coming up at halftime, we'll introduce the Exxon Supreme Team nominees at defensive back, and Aaron Glenn's among that group. And we'll take a look at the Texas Lottery first half highlights and hear from both marching bands. Kind of a late arriving crowd, but they have almost filled in that horseshoe area here at Kyle Field, which holds 70,000. It's going to be uh, somewhere above 60, they expect today. On a football weather kind of an afternoon, breezy and cool. 3-13 remaining in the half, and then ball at their 37, first and 10. Greg Hill's turn at tailback, and a flag is down as he weaves for about Ball's eight yards. The flag was thrown in the area of the snap. That usually indicates holding. Not much else can go wrong in there unless there's some movement that the umpire detects, but normally when he throws a flag, you can figure that the offense held. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. So, what looked to be a decent gain here for AM backs up instead of their 26 yard line. A lot of uh, Hill, a lot of Thomas, nothing so far from McElroy, and they wanted to make a point of utilizing him some way so far, and he has yet to make a dent. The only freshman in Aggie history to score three times in one game. That was against Missouri in AM 73 to nothing whitewashing three weeks ago. Bootleg. Bullock overthrows the intended man, Harrison, who gets popped anyway. His receivers have bailed him out by pulling down a few high balls today. Going with that win may be a factor. That one was too high. Receiver had to be about six foot eight to pull that one down. That was just way up there. So second and 21. 239 and a half. Brian Mitchell is in the game again. He goes to the top of your screen. Etron Smith in at fullback. Hill still the tailback. And pulling off the play fake. Will keep, and Alan Aldridge riding him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Ryan McCoy did something very unusual that time, Dave. He missed an open field tackle. For him, that's unusual. He's a sure tackler and leads the league in tackles. You made a comparison 
in terms of statistics that I never thought I would ever hear you make last week. And it's uh, to Mike Singletary. The numbers, though, stack up to the ones that Singletary put up at Baylor. About 15 tackles per game to lead the conference. I was reminiscent of the uh, time that uh, Mike Singletary did lead the conference, and, and uh, Ryan has done that uh, this year, and that's the reminder. McElroy checks in. He is slot right. Harrison with the pitch, which they hope would catch the Cougar defense unawares. McElroy is knocked down at the 33, and pretty good recognition by the Cougars. That's a little trick play uh, put in to try to utilize uh, McElroy, uh, his speed and his talent. Ball is just a straight drop back uh, thrown to the outside, and then he uh, pitches the ball off. But I would say that the uh, defense of the Cougars did an excellent job in reading that, not giving anything up, not running off with the ball, staying your ground, and then going in and make the play. Well, Monaco Montgomery, number 14, deserves the credit for turning McElroy back inside on that one. It'll be fourth down and 14. Unbeaten streaks that are currently ongoing. Michigan with 23 straight Big Ten victories. Uh, tops that list. Alabama 18 straight in the SEC. Bowling Green with 17 in a row in the Mid-America. And the Aggies are shooting for their 17th straight in Southwest Conference play here today. That dates back to the Texas game at the end of the 90 season, which uh, they lost by just one in Austin. 28-27. Average margin of victory, 21 points. 16 straight. They have had a reign of terror in this league that few teams in the history of the Southwest Conference are able to match. Aggies in the mid-80s had it going. Texas, of course, in the 60s and 70s. Arkansas in the late 50s and early 60s. You know, this is a very important uh, point right here for the Cougars. They have held AM, forced them to punt with two minutes and 20 seconds prior to the half. Now, that's not a lot of momentum to take into the half, but at least the defense stopped them. Now it's up to the offense. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Helton does uh, in terms of going into the win and his offensive philosophy. Both start, offense. The Cougar defensive line flinched that time, and they got 32 for the Aggies. Larry Walker to flinch back, and so the Aggies march backwards, and they'll punt on fourth and 19. Houston with one more timeout left, two minutes and 20 seconds in the half. Bennett needs an outstanding kick with the win. Cougars send the pressure, and it is a good roll. Good thing for AM because it wasn't much of a kick, Lawrence, but Pearson watches it roll out of bounds at the 27 yard line. You know, when you look at the statistics on that, they'll never know it was a poor kick. Got the win behind it, got a good. Uh, Aggie bounce and uh, moved an extra 15 or 20 yards. It looked real good in the paper, 45 yards. That's one of the uh, important things that you try to teach your uh, men that return the punch is to handle a short kick like that so that you don't lose that 15 yards. You go ahead and attack the ball and keep from losing the yardage. One back set, 2-11 to play in the half, underthrown. Intended for a guy that's been shut out today, Keith Jack. Secondary of Texas A&M is in a uh, deep zone. They're going to let them throw anything underneath that they want to throw, converge on the ball, but don't give them anything long. You don't want them to go into halftime with any sort of momentum offensively. Just shut them down. Don't let them score. But as you saw, it's been a miserable first half for Klingler. And he wasn't close on that first down of 10. Aggies blitz, draw play, Lamar Smith. At the 33, hit by Graham and Junior White as we go under two minutes in the half. So the two big weapons held well in check in this half. Smith just 26 yards and Klingler just 3 of 10. This third down is very important. You don't want to punt into this win to Aaron Grant with 144, 140, somewhere in that area left. They've still got a chance to score if you give up the football here. Klingler, pump fake, keeps. He is not the fastest quarterback you'll ever see. 
And he dives near the first down marker, but apparently about a foot shot. That's cutting it a little <laughs> short. Uh, it's okay to slide, but uh, uh, start your slide past the first down marker. Well, they, they give it to him. First down near the 38. I guess he knew where that first down was. Oh, that's pretty good vision. That's real peripheral vision, I can tell you. Now, A&M will burn its first time out. They call this with 129 and a half. Stop the clock here because you have a timeout left. Uh, Houston may bobble the ball. You can get a turnover. You got great field position, time to get more points on the board. So it's wise for Texas A&M to stop the clock, uh, gather themselves uh, after this first down, and now try to get the football back. Really a remarkable first four and a half years for Richard Copeland Slocum, 42-11. And one. That's his career percentage coming into today. He's the fastest ever to 40 wins in conference history. If he wins, no matter what Joe Paterno does today, he will pass him and be number three on that all-time winning percentage list. He'll go up to 791, and Paterno will be at 788. Third all-time. R.C. Slocum has spent as much time in this league as I did. And a lot of his time up to the last five years was as an assistant. He's one of the better coaches in the country. First and ten, Houston. Good protection for Klingler all day, and he fires again incomplete. Sherman Smith screaming that he was held up on the pattern. But no officials agree, and it'll be second and ten. A lot of times you don't know the individual battles that are happening on the football field. Look at Clapp and look at Adams. Clapp still chasing him, trying to get him down. Watch it here, guys. Uh, the official could call that on either one of you, and your coaches would be very upset. Rich Tom's finger is Barry. Reggie Graham. That's the second sack uh, for the record crew. Two knockdowns uh, at the line of scrimmage, batting the ball down. That's uh, pretty good statistics for the first half. Graham has had an outstanding first half. That game now in the third quarter at Tallahassee. Florida State still leading 21 to seven. Second sack by the Aggie defense, averaging four and a half sacks per game. Lamar Smith got away from Solari's tackle, but he's nowhere near the first down. He's finished off by England and Graham, and the clock rolls inside 30 seconds before it is stopped by a and at 29 seconds and a half. Second timeout as they await the punt by Terry George. And the rest of the schedule has SMU and Baylor hooking up at 2 o'clock. DC and Rice also at 2 at the Cotton Bowl, Texas and Oklahoma at 2.30. And tonight at 7 at Jones Stadium in Lubbock. Texas Tech looks to get back on the winning track against North Carolina State. The uh, punt uh, coverage team for Houston's huddled up on the sideline. The kicking coach is telling them now is a great opportunity for Texas A&M to come after the ball to try to block it. 29 seconds left. Try to block the ball. Get another chance to score. SMU and Baylor, by the way, at Ombi Stadium in Dallas at two. George will kick to Glenn, who has yet to uh, get an opportunity today. They're coming. Good blocking by Houston. Way short. Boy, the wind is just refusing to let any punt do any damage whatsoever. It rolls out still in Houston territory on a 14-yard kick at their 48-yard line. Bombs away. Texas A&M with the wind of their back on the 50-yard line. They'll put uh, maybe two, maybe three uh, down close to the end zone unless... Uh, expecting Houston to uh, expect them to throw deep. Screen might be a good play at this stage. Matthews and Harrison go wide left. Pulling, rolling, and 
delivering complete to Ryan Matthews, who scrambles out of bounds at the 35 with 15 seconds. With the wind to their back, they can run the out routes, come on the outside uh, with the little rollout, and work the ball down uh, and uh, get in a position to kick the field goal with this uh, wind to their back. Well, you called it about a 20-yard win, so uh, from where they are now, it would be a 52-yarder, but with the win, that makes it, what, about 32, really? Absolutely. Uh, I think they could kick at it here and have a good chance to make it. They have one timeout left. Already up 14-0. Another sideline route to Matthews. Picks up about seven more to the 28. And with nine seconds to go, Venetulius... And the field goal unit will head out there. Well, what would be about a 45-yarder with the aid of that big North Breeze. Holder is Stormy Case. And this one actually from 46 yards. He kicks it straight. It should go right through because the wind will carry it. The distance is not a factor. Houston is off sides. He'll get another try if this one isn't good, and it is. Now that kick was on a second down and four. Yep. And if it's a five-yard mark off against Houston, they would have a first down. Yeah, five seconds to go. I but think do you take the points off the board? I don't think you take points off the board. I think RC will be happy with that three points. They did score right before the half. That's what the defense wanted to give the ball to the offense so that they get points on the board. Offside, on the job. defense, will be refused, still going to score. Longest kick of the year by Terry Benetton, 46 yards. And Texas A&M with 17 unanswered points here in the second. Those three points, Dave, were very important because what you carry into that dressing room has an effect on what happens in the second half. And that momentum that the offense just established by working it down, getting into position, take advantage of the win, will pay big dividends in the second half. Replay drive, 20 yards. Does this change the uh, strategic thinking in the second half of Houston now that they're down by three scores? Well, it just depends on what Coach Helton is trying to accomplish. Uh, I think that he is trying to build a solid football team. He wants his team to come out in the second half and play very well. I would be very surprised if he came out and started throwing ever down. I think he'll stay with his game plan and try to play better defense, hope for and try to create uh, some turnovers so that they can get some field position and get points on the board. Well, again, the one they created, they did nothing with. That was the fumble recovery at A&M's 27, which they immediately gave back to the Aggies back in the first quarter. I agree with you on that, that it was the play of the half, because had they been able to get points on the board with the wind of their back at that time, uh, they would have put themselves in a much better position. Again, through the end zone. Houston will have one shot to take with five seconds and a half from their 20-yard line. Trailing 17 nothing On a really miserable first half for Jimmy Klingling. 3 of 11 for 55 yards. Remember, just a year ago in this matchup, he threw 28 of 57 for 488. Three touchdowns. Bob well, Davey, the defensive coordinator, said there was nothing like trying to get ready for the run and shoot that Houston ran under John Jenkins. Especially, that was a short week. They played that game on a Thursday night. Wayne will just kill the clock here. End of the first half. Houston kept it close. Scoreless at the end of the first quarter, but the Aggies broke through in the second. As they look to extend their Southwest Conference winning streak to 17 in a row. 17 nothing at halftime here in Aggieland. to you by the 1993 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team, the all-conference team that will be determined by you, the fans. By Southwest Airlines. By Winn-Dixie. By Ford. By 
Texas Farm Bureau. And by Wrangler, the Western Original. It's brought to you by Exxon and its independent dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. By your Texas Dodge dealers. By the Texas Lottery. By Southwest Airlines. And by Dr. Pepper. One of the happier Aggie fans in the stands today, Henry Cisneros, former mayor of San Antonio, currently Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, and a Texas A&M graduate, a former commanding officer of the Aggie Band, in fact. Let's look at our Lincoln Mercury dealer's halftime stats. Not much on that left-hand column. Just five first downs, 40 rushing yards, 55 passing yards for the Cougars. And what really stands out is three for 11 through the air for Cleveland. Two of seven picking up third downs. Each team with a turnover on consecutive plays in the first quarter. And a lot of penalties. And a seven and a half minute time of possession advantage for a &M. These kicks still with the win as the third quarter is underway. What a futile feeling it's got to be for Donald Moffitt, who hopefully stands back there as the deep man for Houston and sees kickoff after kickoff sail over his head. Wingler to go from the 20 as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Field in College Station, Dave Barnett and Grant Taft, first play of the second half. And for a loss, Lamar Smith dragged down at first, it looked like, by Adams, and then he broke that tackle and continued on, and finally Eric England came in to finish the job. We look back at the game plan for the Cougars. Well, of course, they had to come into this game excited about the victory last week and build on it. I really haven't seen much of that. They've struggled a little bit in that first half. Lamar hasn't been able to carry the load in the cage. That uh, lion and cub didn't happen. Well, the cub, I guess they carried. Not the word that much. Second down and 14. Klingler hit for another sack by Sam Adams. The conference leader in tackles for a loss coming in with seven. He and England combine for the hit on Klingler. This is the third big sack of uh, this game for the uh, defense of the Texas Aggies. You can see that uh, Klingler evidently felt that his men were covered to the uh, right-hand side. He's trying to get back to the left to throw the ball to uncovered people. But at that time, he's met head-on by Sam Adams. And he calls timeout with 13.42 in the third quarter. They will discuss a third down and 22 from their own eight. Well, bad enough to start down 17 from your own 20, and even worse, to back up 12 yards on your first two snaps of the second half. After the timeout, the run and shoot for wide outlook on third and 22. And they give it to Smith, who will lose another yard or two. That uh, play was designed to toss the ball underneath the on-charging defensive line. They decided not to come, played right on the line of scrimmage, just pitched the ball to him, pursued to it, and another loss. 
George out of his own end zone. Again, fights a losing battle with the North win. And this will be his worst punt of all. Wow. When have you ever seen a team take over after a punt that was not returned at the other team's 13-yard line? This goes a total of six yards. Wind uh, has a strange effect on the round ball filled with air as it goes into the air. If you get any kind of a hook or slice, it's going to turn quickly, and that ball kicked to the outside so quick that uh, they're now taking up residence on the 12-yard line in Cougar territory with no return. Boy, A&M poised to perhaps deliver a knockout blow here as they get it for the first time in the half. On the Cougar 13th, first and 10. Rodney Thomas hit. Pulled back by Ryan McCoy. He comes up big when they need him. That may lose a yard or two. Dave, uh, we uh, talked about an A&M game plan prior to uh, kickoff, and uh, one was to pressure the passer. I think they've done an excellent job in that area. They've utilized their backfield very effectively, uh, particularly with uh, Thomas and Hill, and then, of course, the tradition of winning here in this stadium is continuing at this point. Thomas lost one, second and 11. McElroy in the game in motion. Thomas on the reverse gives to McElroy, who is dragged down by Nahala Johnson. And the Cougar defense responds. Well-conceived play. They had McElroy in at the wing back, uh, which coaches said they were going to get him in at several positions. Now what he does is goes in motion like he's going to lead the play. Everything moves in this direction. The flow of the ball comes this way. He hands off uh, and uh, with the save, the great play by the uh, one defensive man, I believe he would have waltzed into the end zone, but that's what defense all about. Johnson, the senior from Port Arthur, makes it third and 21. The exotics for both teams have gone nowhere. Pull it to Gross. And the hit by Williams at the 11-yard line. So it'll bring up a field goal situation for the Aggies and a tremendous job by the Houston defense. Very good, and uh, that uh, recovery put them uh, down in good position for the field goal. However, they are on the left side, and this may be a point where that hash mark moving in uh, two yards approximately may help because they're so close with that wind blowing, it could deter it uh, either to the right or the left. Now this used to be a much bigger angle than it now is, and Venetulius needs every bit of it just barely, sneaks it inside the left upright. 10.58 in the third, A&M by 20. Don't forget to uh, vote to win in the Coors Light Fan Picks Poll, 1-800-932-3000. And the Coors Light top ten this week, Florida State, Alabama, Miami, Notre Dame, and Florida. Second five, Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, Nebraska, and Tennessee. Twelfth man on the kickoff, Eunice. If he makes the tackle, you'll hear the crowd roar. No tackles to be made at all when Benetulius is kicked with the win. Now look how close this thing was. The old hash mark farther out, this kick is no good. I was asking RC yesterday if he felt that there had been any advantage uh, to moving the hash marks in. He really didn't feel that way. I don't think it's been an awful lot, but in a situation like this, when you're close to the goal line, those angles uh, change an awful lot by six feet. Arkansas, relatively close to Tennessee. Cougars on the draw play, Lamar Smith able to get outside and he'll have a first down to the 31 yard line. Junior White on the tackle after a gain of 11. Makes a lot of difference with your play selection when you're out on the 20 yard line starting uh, rather than back on the 10. Uh, this looks more like what I thought uh, Coach Helton and his staff would do. Uh, come out, uh, work on the good, solid offense, try to continue to make yardage, get yourself back in the game in the third quarter. Smith held in check. Fourth leading rusher in the conference. Leading receiver. 
Takes the pitch and loses to the 27 where he's hit by Reggie Graham who has had an active day. I tell you, uh, Smith uh, probably would just as soon uh, Klingler kept the ball under those circumstances. It was uh, a scramble play. Uh, he just turned and tossed it to what he believes is a better runner than himself, and that's uh, Correctly so. Smith. <laughs> Aggies have uh, wondered about the level of play of their inside backers this year. Gray may be erasing some questions. He's had a big afternoon. Flags are down on second and 14. And Smith who led the conference and was 12th nationally coming in with 26 receptions hit by Aaron Glenn out of bounds. Flag thrown in that area, Dave, uh, means we probably have someone offsides or a motion penalty to the offense, but uh, we'll see what the official says. Aggies offsides. Four catches today for Smith. None for... Uh, real big yards and you saw the less than four yards per carry average on the ground for him. Slocum's defense very effective. Bottling Offside up the Cougars weapon. on the defense. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. This time they'll need nine instead of 14. Win the state about the same after uh, halftime activities. Uh, they're going into a strong win. Short drop, Keith Jack finally makes a catch and breaks a tackle up near the 40. Michael Hendricks on the stop there. Jack who had a key pass and run against Baylor. Four catches, 109 yards for him a week ago. I was very impressed with him last week and I think this is a good move that shows athleticism. Watch him uh, make a plant, uh, duck underneath the tackler. Uh, Steve Solori coming out usually is another secure tackler, but uh, give credit to Keith. Yeah, the junior college transfer last year, senior from Daly City, California. Carried by Smith. First down, Houston to their 47, driven out by the Mickens. This is by far the best offensive series put together by Houston. They're mixing it up very well, uh, throwing the ball and uh, then uh, running Smith. I think that if they could stay with this and get themselves down into the win and get a score, get the win to their back in the fourth quarter, who knows what can happen. But this drive is essential to this Cougar team. 22 to go in the third. Another short toss. Sherman Smith tries to get away from the hit by Chris Colin. The backup to Jason Atkinson is an inside backer, and he's hit at the AM 47 by Steve Solari. Maybe one of the longer runs I've seen for a yard gain. He was going uh, east and west uh, on that particular move that he made but if he slides inside there and gets a block or two then he could pick up some big yards. He's probably the Cougar whose role has changed the most this year. Led the nation more than 100 catches last year the sixth consecutive Cougar to lead the nation in catches and he came in with just 10 this year. Caught him on a draw. Lots of room for Lamar Smith. 32 of AM. Lamar Smith. Hit by Mickens after a pickup of 15 and they finally have him on track. That's the only way to uh, do anything with that blitz is uh, run the draw directly at it, try to split the uh, linebackers as they come. Exactly what they did. Uh, great hole, and you put Smith in there, he's going to pick up some yards. This is a good drive. Yes, they've looked this afternoon. Another first and ten for the U of H. Klingler with the pump fake deep over the middle into double coverage and a flag against the Aggies. It was intended for Ron Peters. Junior White and Ray Mickens had the double coverage. Uh, the angle that the official looks at uh, determines uh, the two officials behind the play uh, could not see. Uh, the official is supposed to look just as this one did. He looks from the inside out and evidently Mickens got a hand across or an arm across, and that's where they call. You'll be able to see it right that's here. There he is, right on, on the, the arm. 15-yard penalty, first down. I, 
I tell you, Dave, I've been very impressed with the officiating in the Southwest Conference this year. I think it's improved dramatically, and uh, I think coaches are gaining confidence in it. Now, there are going to be plays when you're not satisfied or happy with it, but overall, it's been very good. Yeah, very few controversies this year, unlike a year ago. Smith hunts for room and finds a little up to the 13, about four yards. In fact, the coaches who have played non-conference games, and both of these coaches come to mind, Helton against Michigan, some calls that he really disagreed with, and Slocum likewise against Oklahoma. When they come back and play within the league and they get pure SWC officiating, they say, boy, we'll never complain again. Well, you know what's happened in the last uh, three or four years nationwide is that uh, teams are now using the crews within the area, geographical area, where uh, their team is playing. So it would be a Big 8 officiated crew in the Big 8 area. Wingler looks and is chased and dropped for a loss. Antonio Shorter. That was a big play by the defense down in the uh, four-down zone. What you end up here is you've got Klingler in a position to throw, but everyone's covered. Now he's trying to scramble out in good pursuit and nails him for a loss. Fourth sack by a for a total of 19 yards. Billy Mitchell is in as a nickel defensive back. Number 22 in the maroon. Blitz comes. Toss Smith. He will lose back to the 23. Typhoon McMullen, the backup safety on the stop. Well, that was one of the poorly executed plays. Uh, Klingler is not used to running the option. You'll see him come out and just turn and pitch the ball. Had he kept the ball and forced number six, Typhoon, to take him, then uh, something might have happened on the outside. And after the tackle, Lamar Smith is slow getting up. The man who has provided 41% of Houston's total yards this year. Here's what happened to him. Coach Helton did not want to see anything happen to this running back. He has uh, used him rather sparingly in this game uh, by using some substitutes. And uh, he wants this young man to get up. It looks like it's a shoulder. Uh, when you get uh, isolation out there uh, on a single defensive back, sometimes you're swung down. Here's where he didn't carry the ball. You'll see Teifel being able to make the quarterback pitch and then make the tackle. You see him come down, uh, Lamar Smith, on his right shoulder. That is not good news for the Cougars. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt by Trace Kraft, whose longest this year is 36, and this is into this huge breeze. He's got enough lag, and he is good. Well, they didn't get to seven points, but getting uh, the three points is very important. Houston finally on the board with 6.26 in the third. Well, Lamar Smith making his way to the Houston locker room, holding that uh, left shoulder and elbow high. It, it looks like to compensate for the right shoulder. Well, there are all sorts of uh, guesses we could make, but we'll not do that. The only thing you know for sure is going to hurt the uh, Houston offense. Michael Roy on the return up to the 29-yard line. 14-yard return. They're working on Smith just outside the Cougar locker room. And they just now can get in there. You lock them up because you don't want anything stolen, and now they can finally get them into the trainer's room. Drive produces three points for Trace Craft. 6.22 to go in the third quarter. Aggies leading by 17 after the 10-play 58-yard march. First points against the Aggies at Kyle Field in 12 quarters since the first half of the TCU game last year. Thomas back into the backfield. Driven back at the 34, pickup of about five. And as usual, Ryan McCoy somewhere in on the five. Florida State has added a touchdown. And Bobby Bowden's a happy man yeah. right now. Looks like that streak of futility is going to end. 
This is a real important drive for the Cougar defense. Their offense is taking the ball into the wind. Got points on the board, 20 to 3. 550 left in this quarter. Keep them out of the end zone in the third quarter. You got the win, fourth quarter. Rose, the fullback, stacked up. Might get a yard. Marlon Foots the left end, McCoy and Dixon combining for the hit against Cliff Gross, 240-pound fullback. The uh, Houston defense last week uh, really played well over their heads, and here you see a very fine play uh, by the Houston defensive front with some assists from the linebackers, no gain. Harrison as big as they've got on that front. He's six feet, no one is taller, and he's 276. Very small up front for the Cougars. Swing pass, Thomas, he'll not have the first down. Thomas had improved the reception man out of the backfield, but he's hit at the 36, and it'll be fourth and three. Good series for the uh, defense of the Cougars. Pump it up, make something happen. You gotta do it now. You've held the Aggies. Now get a good return. Get the offense on the field. Get more points. Run the clock out. Get the win to your back. Real simple game plan, right? Well, it, it sounds easy. <laughs> Looks easy on paper. Usually isn't. This is uh, a new return man, Sherman Smith. Normally it's Lawrence McPherson. There is, according to the Cougars, movement by the Aggies. If it's against Houston, it's first down a and I'm really a little bit surprised that this late in the season that we're seeing that much movement on the line of scrimmage. Uh, Dead offenses ball. have worked Ball's together. Start. Offense. Offenses have worked together so that uh, there shouldn't be a lot of that at this time, and uh, uh, we've seen a lot today. We've seen a whole bunch today. James Bennett walk on from Austin, a junior. They were really uh, worried about this position. He's improved as the year went on. They lost the best punter in the conference last year to graduation, David Davis. And when your biggest concern coming in is punter, you know you're loaded. Cougars go for the block. Smith will return from his 18. Houston will go from their 31. The kick traveled 48. The return can. He's hit by Reggie Gray. Next week, we'll stay with the Aggies on the road against the Baylor Bears at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. 12 noon Central Time. Check your local listings on next week's Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week. Baylor in Dallas to take on SMU this afternoon. And after their loss in the Astrodome last week, it's all must games for the Bears. Nickel defense, Billy Mitchell's in. Good protection now, Klingler is chased. Finally, coming open, in bounds for the catch is Peters at the 47-yard line. Very important uh, first down. Going into the win, if you can pick up a first down around midfield, get another one, now you're getting close to the four-down zone. You got a chance to run the clock out uh, into the win. And, uh, you know, the Cougars still have a chance in this, but they've got to move the ball down and score on this drive. And they've got to do it without Lamar Smith. With DeAndre Sanders now in at the tailback. He's the target. Breaks the tackle. Very powerful senior from Corpus Christi reaches midfield. DeAndre has excellent hands, Dave. He... Uh, he was one of the better receivers last year. He's, a, he's an outstanding athlete. Uh, Coach Elton is uh, very impressed with his leadership this year and what he's contributed to the team, uh, sort of in a minor role compared to what he's done in the past. He came in with just seven carries on the year for 34 yards. Almost every time they hand it off, it has been to Smith this year. Now Moffitt checks in at the tailback, where they began uh, to experiment with him last week. He gets the call straight up the middle. Dragged back by a pack of Aggies at the 49 of AM to bring up a third and about six. 
I've been very impressed with Graham this uh, whole ball game. Uh, what uh, gets stopped, uh, excellent block uh, by a Cougar, but he comes off the block and still is able to get in on the uh, play. Larry Jackson normally is at that inside backer spot. He was questionable this week because of an ankle, which he re-injured at Texas Tech last week. They're in a big day. Batted down. And a flag is down late. Keefa Chatham from Waco, Texas, batted that ball down. He's substituting in for Sam Adams at this point, trying to give Sam a little breather for fourth quarter. Good move for Keefa. The intended receiver, Joey Mouton, on the slant end. It was batted down, it hit the turf, and then the flag came. And from the reaction of the Aggies, it's against Houston. Disregard the flag. The ball had been tipped. There is no interference. Fourth down. There's a good shot of Keefa Chatham getting up uh, right on the line of scrimmage, using his uh, big hand to uh, bat the ball down. What they would have called if Chatham hadn't gotten the deflection was interference when Glenn got hooked up with Joey Mouton. But a new point. Glenn will return this one. Pretty good by George to pick that one up off the extra turf. Glenn Fair catch at the 13. And the nation's leading punt returner hasn't done much damage today. 35-yard kick by Terry George. In fact, Texas A&M, because of uh, Aaron Glenn's great year, leading the nation at nearly 20 yards per punt return on the season. Glenn against Missouri set an A&M record with 131 return yards. That included a 76-yard touchdown. We may see him make a big uh, play in the fourth quarter when the ball will be kicked further. Short kicks are hard to have. Greg Hill. First down to the 27-yard line. The safeties, Douglas and Williams, after a 15-yard ramble by Greg Hill. Very good block by Ryan Matthews uh, on the outside perimeter. Stays with his uh, man. Hill makes a normal Hill cut, cuts up in. Keeps driving those old powerful legs and picks up the first down. 6.6 per carry in his first game of 93. Tough pass is incomplete, intended for Matthews. Coverage by Delmonico Montgomery, and the Aggies wanted interference, but it looked like he just timed it perfectly. Excellent defense. Uh, again, he's breaking on the ball, has every right to the ball. Uh, did not get his hand or arm on the uh, offensive player. But that's defense. Second and 10, 2.02 to go in the fourth, 20-3 to a and m Both teams 1-0 in conference play coming in, the Aggies 3-1 for the year. And up near the 30 is Greg Hill, hit by Delethro Bell, bring up third down. Penetration by the Cougar defensive line then caused uh, Hill to tangle up his feet a little bit and allowed Delethro, Delethro Bell to get there. All year long, one of the concerns for Houston has been the length of time that their defense has been on the field. That's been a big problem today again. Big edge in kind of possession for AM. On the blitz, down goes Pulling at the 22, where John W. Brown, JB1, raced in from his blind side. Safety blitz uh, coming from the backside. Uh, those things are very, very uh, difficult to uh, block against. You've got one man blocking on that side. He has to pick up the outside rusher. Then outside of that man will be the defensive back coming in for the sack. You know, it's amazing that that, that blindside hit doesn't produce a fumble every time. Bullard doing a good job pumping it in. Smith with a hard time getting the handle. And an even harder time finding any room. Larry Walker hits him for a net loss of seven after a 57-yard punt. 
That's the kind of punt uh, we'll see in the fourth quarter where Aaron Glenn has a chance to return. You outkick your coverage. It is over in Tallahassee. Not just the game, but the frustration by the Seminole. And it's underway in Dallas where Baylor leads 7-0 at OMB Stadium. Boy, what is, uh, what is going through Bobby Bowden's mind? It's just hard to imagine how good that ring's got to feel. Elation. Andre Sanders up near the 18-yard line. Probably one more snap in the third quarter, and then Houston will have the wind in the fourth. Coming from a backed-up position, they need to let that clock run out so that if they do have to punt, uh, they'll have the wind at their back. Still no word, by the way, from the Houston locker room on the condition of Lamar Smith. There we go. He's still not to emerge. Sanders remains the back. Fumbled snap. Looks like Klingler falls on it. Houston has had some problems with that, Dave. Uh, the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, he's got a guard playing center, and uh, he has snapped it a little bit low and a little high sometimes. And he's a true freshman, Marcus DeGreen. That is the end of the third quarter with a score in Aggieland, Texas A&M 20, and the Houston Cougars here. Fourteen team in the country looking very solid so far, up 20 to three. And two other problems for Houston: they've been held to 143 total yards, even with Lamar Smith for most of the game, and he's out. Uh, and we still don't know what his injury is. The third quarter was by far the best quarter for the Cougars. They did some things that they had to do to put themselves in a position to win. Still down 17 and backed up in their own end. It is knocked away, intended for Keith Jack by Billy Mitchell who returned from his three-game suspension last week in Lubbock, came up with his first career sack in that game and the deflection to end this Houston drive. And now we get to see Aaron Glenn maybe get a chance to go to work. Terry George will kick from near his goal line. Glenn is averaging 22.8 per return on nine kick opportunities this year. George hangs up a beauty. Cougars bottle Aaron Glenn up at the 38-yard line. Dave Barnett, Grant Taft on Raycom and Prime Network from Kyle Field and College Station. 60,000 plus at the home of the 12th man. And we've seen pretty much what uh, we expected to see. The A&M defense, which with the one exception of the Oklahoma game, has been very solid all year long. Couple of shutouts over LSU and Missouri. Shut down one of the top ten offenses in the country last week at Texas Tech, and they've held Houston to three so far. Greg Hill on the carry at right tackle pushes forward to the 41. Houston defense, uh, though they don't have a lot of depth, it really has held up pretty good throughout this entire ball game. They're pursuing the football. They're still running hard, uh, led by Ryan McCoy. Greg Hill in his return today, 12 carries and 71 yards. Thomas, 16 carries, 59 yards. Play action this time. Good play fake by Pulley. Catch is made by Short, the tight end, hit by Jerome Williams. Bring up third and short. Jerome Williams played that perfectly. He uh, laid back, let the ball be thrown, then makes a stop for the lack of a first down. When we talk about that Oklahoma game for a and they gave up 44 points, but 14 of them in the late moments after it had been decided, and R.C. Slocum regrets that he gave the Sooners a chance to run up that score now. That is picked off, and look out! Delmonico Montgomery brings this one back all the way, and Houston cuts it to 20 to 9. An 
A 52-yard interception return by Montgomery. Third quarter looming very large for the Cougars. Didn't make uh, a lot of mistakes. Had one that cost him three points. Maintained possession of the ball well. Kept the Aggies out of the end zone. Now got a break, and they're back in the race with the win to their back. A redshirt freshman from Gladewater, Texas, makes the biggest play of his young career. He just read Pullig. He saw Pullig zero in. He timed it perfectly. It is 20 to 10. What a difference this one play makes for Delmonico Montgomery. Pullig looks all the way. Uh, never took his eye off of his receiver. Defensive back was just in perfect position. Uh, Pullig's the only guy that can make the play to stop uh, the interception, and he didn't make it. So, what a different outlook now for the Cougars. They've cut it to 10, and they've got a long way to go. Delmonico Montgomery's 52-yard interception return makes it 20 to 10, Texas A&M. Houston missing Lamar Smith out with a shoulder injury still unspecified. A&M total yardage is uh, not spectacular. They've been very solid today, 241 yards, 71 of them by Greg Hill on the ground, but it's a completely different feeling now in Kyle Field. Hey, this defense of the Cougars, uh, it's, it's easy to sort of overlook what they're doing today, but in truth, they're hanging in there very well. They're making plays. They're not letting he, uh, Texas A&M run up and down the field. I, I think they're playing about as well as they played last week. Yeah, that's a much lower total yardage reading than, than you would feel like it should be. They and them have been in firm command of this game. McElroy's return is a good one. And he almost brings this back all the way. 42 yards for Leland McElroy, the Aggie set up in Houston territory. That is a very big play at this stage of the game. Just had an interception. Now they've got to uh, come out of their own end zone, wind in their face, and they get a 50-yard kickoff return, and they're set up for great field position. And the guy who missed the tackle was, guess who, Delmonico Montgomery. McElroy, whose offensive contributions have been limited today. Well, the return of Hill makes a big one on special teams, and Rodney Thomas sees big yardage on the sweep. On seven up to the 39. Clearing block by Calvin Collins and Cliff Gross. Sweep's been uh, Texas A&M's uh, number one play. They're averaging about seven yards per snap on that play but it has uh, historically been one of their better plays. Well, we said that, that this series has a tradition of closer than expected games. This one wasn't supposed to be close at all. This was about a three touchdown uh, margin by the prognosticators in favor of AM. and it's a 10 point game early in the fourth quarter. Look at that pile move forward up to the 30. Five yards after he's hit by about seven defenders. And as you said, just what a and needed after the shock waves of the interception return. First and 10 from the Houston 30 after Rodney Thomas's strong run. Another pitch, Thomas for about four or five. And he's got fresh legs here in the fourth quarter. Number 54, Calvin Collins, uh, predicted to be one of the better league's linemen in the next uh, few years. Does a great job uh, coming off the football, maintaining good foot position, and uh, actually pancaking the defensive lineman. He replaced a good one in John Ellisor, but they think he may eventually have NFL potential. Seven-minute advantage in time of possession for a &M, wearing down the Cougar defense. Wide open. Cliff Gross. First and goal. And they'll tack on what would appear to be a face-masking against the Cougars. 
Gross reached the eight on his own, and it looked like either McCoy or Douglas grabbed his face mask. Early lead for Michigan State in that one. Simple uh, little bootleg coming out off a play fake. Gross, the fullback, slips out into the flat. And you have a uh, five-yard penalty on the end of it, face mask. And this is exactly what Texas A&M needed after the uh, touchdown of the Cougars to cover that up with seven points going into the win. Then they maintain or regain control of the game. Yeah, if they punch it in here, that Houston momentum lasted all of about two minutes. First and goal, 11.15 to go in the game. Thomas to the two. First Cougar to make contact, McCoy, the middle linebacker. Then some help, and some help comes in from the bench. Four fresh defenders. Last week against Baylor, the Cougars uh, held two times inside the five-yard line, keeping Baylor from scoring two times on fourth and goal. And we'll see now what they can do against this uh, Aggie offense inside the three-yard line. Baylor another time had it in short yardage. And uh, Houston allowed just the field goal. The only points all day by the game. Well, the defense, they feel, really grew up last week. Leap with flags down, and Thomas has the same problem that the Baylor backs had last week. He leaps too far away from the goal. What causes that is the defensive linemen are able to get underneath the pads of the offensive linemen, uh, causing congestion. He has to jump too quickly. Now, we saw four defenders come in from the bench for Houston. Apparently, only three went out because the call is too many men on the field. Well, that's a good defense. You get 12 down <laughs> on the goal line, I'm telling you, baby, you, you can hold a lot of people out of there. <laughs> Each team, eight penalties. What looked like a good stop by the Cougars turns into second and goal from their one. Sad part about that is probably the 12th man really had nothing to do with their uh, holding him on the one yard line. Bill House backfield. Thomas, touchdown. His second today. didn't wear red and white very long at all, did it? A&M right back in control, 26 to 10 with the extra point by Benetulius. And they lead again by 17. The offensive set for the uh, Aggies there has two fullbacks in the backfield. One to the right, one to the left. Thompson, Thomas at uh, the tailback. So you got a good lead blocker on either side. 44, Detron Smith, the other fullback. Rodney Thomas with his 10th touchdown of his junior year. Leland McElroy's kick return sets up AM for the scoring drive after Houston had very briefly cut the lead to 20 to 10. 60,575 watching it in Kyle Field today. James Muniz, number 12, representing all of the uh, 12th men, past, present, and future on this kickoff. I'm anxious to see if he'll get a tackle because I want to hear this crowd be rough. <laughs> he doesn't it won't be for lack of time. Might be for lack of opportunity. Benetulius' kick out of bounds. And there's Muniz. New rules uh, cause uh, kick out of bounds to really be a costly item. Uh, the uh, offense will take the football at the 35-yard uh, line, and that gives you great field position. You can't get that much on most returns against uh, this uh, kickoff team of the Aggies. Oklahoma, first blood in the Cotton Bowl. Michigan State adds a field goal. They lead 10 to nothing. 
Yeah. And the Aggies will kick it again. The NFL went to that in trying to speed up the game a few years ago. Every out of bounds kick uh, taken at the 35. There's a lot of ways the college game could speed up, and that's just one of them. Yep. Well, you got some pull. How long will it take to get some of those speed up rules? Uh, well, I'm not on the rules pass. committee anymore. I spent six years on the NC2A rules committee, and uh, we put in a few rules that speeded it up, I think. And Benetulia sends this one down. Montgomery from the 20. And he's down at the 30. 10.07 to play. Larry Walker has had a big day, special teams. West man driving hard down the field. Wants to get in on that play. Whoops. Sorry, you can't come through here, Mr. Bailey says. Now, the days of Jackie Sherrill, he used to have an entire team of 12 men. R.C. Slocum didn't quite have the stomach to continue that entire tradition, but he kept a little piece of it by having one 12th man at all times on the kick return the coverage unit. Then the stumbles as he gets it to Sanders. Sanders bouncing off his own man and then uh, picks up about five or six before he's driven out by Jason Atkinson. It's good running. Just keep your feet driving and uh, see what happens. Ran right up the legs of Charles Spencer, number 23. But continued on and turned it into a gain of seven. Just eight for 18. That used to be a bad quarter for Jimmy Clinton. 87 yards. That's his entire day's output. If that's ruled in bounds, that's a terrific catch. It is out of bounds on the coverage by Mickens against Ron Peters, but it looked like Peters held on to the ball. He made the catch, but it was clearly out of bounds. Klingler uh, throws this ball very well. Just by inches. That a and defense, tough to penetrate. They have not allowed a touchdown in 11 straight quarters. The only touchdown today on the interception return from Houston by Montgomery. Big third down. Overthrown again intended for Ron Peters. And the Aggies hold, but they hold because Klingler misfires a couple of times on what appear to be open patterns. Klingler's releasing the ball, and it's flying on him. I, I don't know if the wind is strong enough behind him to do that. It will do it sometimes. You release the ball, and that wind will get underneath and pick the ball up. Looks like that's what's happening. Look at that, 34-yard average, even with a 67-yard punt for Terry Jewell. This one, with the wind, takes little advantage of it. It's off the side of his foot. And his inconsistency continues just 26 yards. And out of bounds at the 37 of Texas A&M, which leads the Houston Cougars by 17. Well, I, I think I'm familiar with most of the A&M traditions. That is a new one on me, if that is indeed a tradition. I wouldn't make a guess on the, that myself. I'd leave that alone. Yeah, probably a good decision on your part. McElroy with flags down, cuts it in back, and uh, breaks tackles and reaches the Houston 48, where he's hit by Donald Douglas. 14 yards should the play stand. For Leland McElroy in the same backfield now with Detron Smith. Likelihood of holding is uh, high. Once again, you are correct, sir. Aggies back down from their 37-yard line. I happen to know where those flags fall. You can pretty well determine uh, what the call was. From hard-earned experience. Absolutely. Right? On the offense, 10-yard penalty, 
from the spot of the foul. That'll mark it back at their 23-yard line. And they need the 47 for the first down. Cougars at this stage have to have some help from the Aggies. Got to have another turnover. Mistake, bad play, penalty, something. Right now the Aggies are back in control. On the ground on first and 23, McElroy gets outside. Knocked out by Douglas, but that's a pretty good start. Boy, does he add a dimension to that offense. A little used today. He might be the bell cow back on most college backfields. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Dave Barnett, Grant Taft at Kyle Field with 9-11 to play in the game. Texas A&M number 14 in the nation coming in on top 27 to 10. Flags everywhere prior to the snap. And Collins move first, it looked like. Well, that's kind of help that uh, ball, Cougars have to have. Ball start, offense. Leland McElroy came in 122 all-purpose yards per game. A freshman who will be for another year behind Rodney Thomas, behind Greg Hill. There's a lot of backs who wouldn't want to go into a situation like that. But R.C. Slocum says the, the same thing they would be in the new year in case Rodney Thomas is ahead of Greg Hill. And it faces McElroy. McElroy gets it to the 40 here. And it has never deterred any of them. They're the type that don't shrink from competition, but they, they tend to thrive on it. And there's well, plenty of it. Texas A&M is a, a running offensive team. And uh, running backs like to go to teams that are going to run the football. And so they'll always have a chance to get the better running backs because of their past history. Two wideouts right. Uh, Tony Harrison off of the screen. Ryan Matthews inside of him. Offset eye on it. Bullet chased by McCoy, gets away, and is knocked out by the lead throw bell about five yards shy of the first down. The Cougar defense has held thanks to the markoffs against the Aggies. And now the Aggies have got to hope for a big return. They've got McPherson back instead of Sherman Smith, who had returned the last two punts. Well, the Cougars have to have something good happen for them. Either they create it or let uh, Texas A&M uh, make a bobble. Ooh, J.B. Wan almost got himself a block. McPherson goes nowhere. 38-yard kick by James Bennett, who did a nifty job avoiding a block by John Brown. 8-16 to play. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. You look like a person on the go, am I right? You're a VIP kind of guy, am I right? You don't have time for some fancy smancy breakfast, am I right? At La Quinta, they've customized a free continental breakfast for busy guys like yourself. In fact, this blueberry muffin was baked with you in mind. La Quinta, you're not staying at a hotel, you're staying with us. Selling Houston's best selection of old color Supremes at Sam White's low, no haggle prices. Take one home today. Doing it right at Sam White. Selling Houston's best selection of Isuzu rodeos. Over 100 available with 750 in option savings. Take one home today. Doing it right at Sam White. The best selection of Nissan trucks, King Cabs, and SUV6s with up to 1,500 in factory to dealer incentives. Take one home today. We're doing it right at Sam White. Motor City on Beach Nut at the Southwest Freeway. Aggies have 8-16 to finish here before they can improve their mark to 4-1 and one as they head to Waco in what is always uh, one of the more highly competitive series in the Southwest Conference, our Exxon game of the week next week, 12 noon Central time, and they will be leading SMU in the second quarter. Jimmy Kindler steps up and delivers complete to Keith Jack, who is tremendous after the catch. 
It's 21 yards for Jack with the tackle by Aaron Glenn. They've just had trouble getting him out in the clear where he can do his work. Well, I, I feel like he's uh, one of the better receivers I've seen uh, this year, particularly after he catches the ball. He has good running ability. Had some uh, people downfield trying to help him. Watch the other receivers come in trying to uh, make blocks. Also, you'll see the technique used by the Texas A&M secondary. They try to strip that ball anytime the man is loose in the secondary. Wingler got it off just as the blitz arrived. Sherman Smith to the 45-yard line. Billy Mitchell, who's had a lot of activity, as the nickel back makes the tackle. Lamar Smith's shoulder injury keeping him out this entire second half. And if that is something that keeps him out more than a week or two, and, and most shoulder injuries can do, and you don't know anything officially, but if it keeps him out for any length of time at all, a struggling Houston attack can really go south. Jack dives, should have a first down to the 48 of AM with a hit by Michael Hendricks. That's a guy that's been worth 41% of their total yards, Lamar Smith. And that's the thinnest position on the roster to begin with. They only have about three or four in uniform at running back. It'll really hurt them. One of the guys they play at fullback is really a defensive lineman. Bobby Rodriguez, if they put in a blocking back, just because of the shortage of numbers there. Wendler with the audible, hangs it up, and way out of bounds. It was intended for Joey Mouton, who got tangled up with Aaron Glenn. I think the uh, Cougar coaching staff made a very good decision at halftime. They came out, stayed really with the knitting that they had planned uh, for this uh, ball game. Uh, they've been able to play good defense and uh, and really keep themselves in this game. They've uh, they've done a good job moving the ball in the third and fourth quarter. Uh, here you see them execute uh, very solid offensive Offense. plays. Second down. Still close at Rice Stadium. Seven six owls in the second quarter. 27-10 Aggie. 6.44 to play. Jimmy Klingler this afternoon, 11 of 24 for 119 yards. That's about one quarter his output in this game last year. Moffitt gets away from England, but then is caught by Junior White and swarmed under for a loss. They're not going to make a lot of yardage running uh, left, right, east, west uh, against the Aggie defense. Their pursuit is so great that uh, you're just going to have a hard time outrunning them. They've got great speed as well. Moffitt thrown back to his 47. It'll be third 16. Best place to run at the Aggies is straight at him. Four wide outs for Kinley. Going deep, Sherman Smith had a step on Mickens, but the ball was way overthrown as the wind behind Klingler became his worst enemy on that path. Five fifty-nine to play. Houston will have to punt down 17. punt. Glenn from his eight-yard line trying to get the return block set up and the Cougars cover it pretty well. 44-yard punt and a 10-yard return. Reveille looking on as the Aggies lead 27-10. Today's game is brought to you by the 1993 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team. Be sure and cast your vote at Exxon through October 31st. By Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By La Quinta Inn. Texas Dodge Dealers. And by 
by Dr. Pepper. From their 19 yard line on first and 10, Leland McElroy, nice off tackle and is off to the races. 81 yards. The freshman from Beaumont Central just made the run of his life. Wow. Did he turn it on? You know, he's so uh, nifty running in heavy traffic, and then he's got that burst of speed. Then the Julius makes it 34 to 10. That is by one yard the longest run by the Aggies this year. Thomas had an 80-yarder, and McElroy bests him by one here. Very simple play, a straight handoff with the lead by the fullback. Detron Smith got a good block at the line of scrimmage, but McElroy just drives through and sprints into the end zone. Boy, about the last 60 yards of that, there's no one else even in the picture.